Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Hosey. It's a, a pleasure to serve under your chairship. And I am very grateful to the Honourable Member for Monmouth. Um, you know, he raised a number of issues and concerns in his contributions. And it is important that this debate remains respectful and that we are able to have a reasonable and decent conversation and consultation. And I commend you know, both the UK and Scottish governments on their consultations. The Scottish government's consultation received a huge number uh, of responses, and over 60% of those who responded were in favour of the proposals. Um, and, you know, he, he, he talked, I think, in oversimplified terms on a number of occasions. And I, I go back to my original point about that not being helpful, that, that, that deepening the debate and expanding the debate about some of the concerns and some of the issues is absolutely vital. And the Honourable Lady uh, for Oxford West and Abingdon made an excellent contribution. Um, and I think that the points that she made about concerns about rolling back on the Equality Act were, were, were concerned me greatly. Um, and uh, the hypothetical uh, example that she used uh, highlighted perfectly that, you know, Id identity fraud es essentially, you know, would be a crime and that we have to remember that. Um, and, you know, the 93% the of people who, you know, seek uh, in the trans community who, who have sought to get support, who have sought to access services being turned away is, is, is a shame and a stain on our society in my view. And yesterday was Trans Day of Remembrance. And that it was a day when we took a moment to celebrate the incredible contribution that trans people make to our communities and to reflect and remember our trans siblings who've been killed, committed suicide or faced prejudice and not been able to live or be recognised in a way of their choosing. And it's my firm belief uh, that the matters in front of us today are about exactly that. Living in a way of our choosing without fear or prejudice and having a legis legislative framework that supports people to do exactly that. Now, Mr. Hosey, I started school the year that Section 28 was introduced. That was a law that meant schools and teachers could not talk to students op openly about their sexual orientation or gender identity without fear of losing their jobs. Now, so much of legislation around LGBTI rights have been and still are based on fear rather than acceptance. We have come a long way in all parts of the UK. I commend her and her government on the work that they have done and the other governments around the UK, uh, particularly the Scottish government, who have gone a little bit further. And I hope that you know, perhaps we can meet at some point and discuss you know, uh, the, um, the spousal veto and the fact that that's something that has been scrapped in Scotland and has meant greater equality. Uh, for trans people. But Section 28 was scrapped in 2003. By then I was halfway through my university degree. I grew up believing that if I came out I couldn't live a normal life or that I wouldn't have equal rights. Now I am an ardent feminist and I am an openly gay MP and I am not about to shut the door on the equality of trans people just because people like me have now got greater equality. And those of us in the LGBTI plus community and all of us who believe in equality and enjoy greater equality must do all that we can to support others who are marginalised and discriminated against. And the reality is that the legislation as it stands in terms of gender recognition, whilst it was absolutely groundbreaking in 2004, is now out of date medicalising and marginalising people who, who are trans, in my view, is absolutely wrong. And we recently celebrated a new chapter in Scotland for LGBTI people as inclusive education has become a reality. I know that the UK Government are also working on this, but I want to take a moment to recognise Time for Inclusive Education, TIE, Liam Stevenson and Jordan Daly, plus all the many organisations who have supported us in giving briefings today, Stonewall Scotland, LGBT Youth Scotland and the Trans Alliance, and who worked on that legislation and those policies in Scotland, John Swinney, Angela Constance and Christina McKelvey. 
Now, you know, I appreciate that sexuality and gender identity are two very different things. Um, but the challenges I faced in terms of coming to my sexuality, not coming out until I was 32, I cannot imagine how difficult it must therefore be as somebody who is trans and is trying to operate in a system where they, their transition is medicalised, where they have to travel hundreds of, sometimes thousands of miles, as the Honourable Lady for uh, Oxford West and Abington mentioned. Many trans people feel that they have to go abroad uh, because it's their only choice. I have met with a number of constituents, a number of young people in my Livingston constituency who are trans, some who are pre-op, some who are post-op, and the kinds of challenges that they have faced are truly heartbreaking. And even in Scotland, where we have, I would, you know, we have uh, come, I think, se uh, second top of uh, inclusiveness of the LGBTI Global Index, we still have a significant way to go. And it is my view that living in a country and society where your orientation or identity does not have legal recognition and you don't have equal rights is corrosive to the soul. And that is why, at the very core of this, reforming the legislation and to changing our societal view and structures will follow from changing the law on gender recognition. And I recognise that the debate has become very polarised. That is a source of great sadness to me. I don't think it helps when the media uh, sensationalise. Absolutely, there are cases where systems are being abused. We must recognise that. We must address those concerns. But we must not make policy based on f a few individuals who seek to abuse a system. There will always be those who will seek to abuse the system. That is regrettable. They should be dealt with appropriately. But we do not make policy on the basis of that. Now, I'd be happy to give way to the Honourable Lady. As she's rightly pointed out, it's a small minority of people um, who, who would seek to cause other people harm. However, over half of trans people in the UK have attempted suicide, and 84% have said they've experienced suicidal thoughts. Does she agree that a lot more needs to be done to protect and support them? I absolutely could not agree more with the Honourable Lady. She makes a very powerful point. It is a, sh it is a stain on our society that trans people feel so marginalised. Many of them feel so marginalised. And in this debate and in this discussion, we must do all that we can to raise our voices, to show our support for them, and that we make sure our policies and our laws properly support them and recognise them. Now, the Scottish Government had its own consultation on reforming the Gender Recognition Act 2004 um, and it ran from the 9th of November 2017 to the 1st of March 2018. We had 15,697 responses. 60% of respondents were in support of the Government's proposals. We have to recognise that 40% were not. And it is important to recognise that and it is important to understand why that is. Nonetheless, they are the figures. Now, the, the Honourable Gentleman for, for Monmouth raised a number of concerns about uh, um, domestic violence and, and services, uh, w you know, women's services. And I just want to, you know, give him a few quotes from what other, some of the organisations in Scotland have said. Rape Crisis Scotland Chief Executive Sandy Brindley said, I think the most important thing to say is that the proposed changes should make no difference to the provision of women-only services. That's where some confusion has arisen. There isn't any rape crisis which would ask to see documentation of gender. I mentioned Linda Rogers of Edinburgh Women's Aid, um, who said there are concerns out there that our service could in some way be abused by allowing people to self-declare their gender, but said this wasn't something she'd heard from the organisation's staff or board. The reality is that any service has the potential to be abused, and we would deal with that whatever direction it came from on a case-by-case -case basis. Roger said... I don't think this should be used as a reason to restrict the rights of a particular group. On young people, which I know is something that many people have a concern over, Stonewall have said being able to access legal recognition would have a hugely positive impact on trans young people's health and experience in education. Like all young people, trans young people get on better at school and college when they're supported to be themselves. This is particularly important given the alarming rates of transphobic bullying happening in Britain's schools today 
and the impact that this has on trans young people's mental health. Lowering the age at which young people can obtain legal recognition would also raise awareness of trans young people's needs and support from schools and colleges to address misconceptions and stereotypes that fuel, trans fuel transphobic bullying. There was a case study that Stonewall offered uh, from uh, a woman called Susan. My daughter deserves to have the legal status and identity that matches who she is. I don't understand why people can't accept that everyone has a right to, uh, to, li to live their life being truly themselves, as long as it doesn't break the law or impact ne negatively on anyone else. And I just want to share with the Chamber an experience I had earlier in the year, where I visited Malawi, and I met with a number of trans activists, and I heard their stories about their experiences in a country where it is illegal not just to be uh, trans, but to be gay. In fact, trans people have no legal standing in that country. So one of the, the activists I met had been in their workplace, attacked purely on the basis uh, of being trans, who went to the police and was told to go home and dress in their proper identity and come back and that, that crime could then be recorded. Now, that is a world away, I would like to think, from where we are. But the mental and physical toll that it had taken on those activists was terrifying. And I think we have to absolutely recognise that changing one's gender is not something that anybody would do lightly. And they would, it would be you know, a very rare thing and be dealt with appropriately should anyone do that for nefarious reasons. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think that it's really, really important to recognise that. I'd be happy to give away a... Uh, I thank the Honourable Lady for giving way, and she's making a, a very powerful uh, speech, and she described her experience in Malawi and said that's uh, a world away. But sadly, we know that 41% of trans people have experienced a hate crime uh, in the past year, and certainly I know from talking to some of my uh, trans constituents that that's consistent uh, with their experience. In reality, don't many trans women need precisely the same male uh, protection from male violence and access to safe spaces that other women need? Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with the Honourable Lady. And I would just you know, close by saying that I hope that the Honourable Gentleman and others who have concerns will be assured by the fact that women's groups such as Rape Crisis Scotland, Scottish Women's Aid, Zero Tolerance and Gender, Equate Scotland, Close the Gap and Women 5050 campaigns have come out in support of the proposed changes in Scotland and indeed their equivalent organisations in the UK. We must recognise there are concerns. We must address those concerns. But we absolutely must hold a mirror up to those who are uh, marginalising and attacking trans people and their rights and recognise that there is a groundswell of support for equality, for a change in the law to ensure that gender identification and the processes that trans people have to go through are discriminatory at their core and we absolutely must change the law to ensure that they are properly supported and the law reflects that, and our society reflects that. Yeah.